Hello and welcome to Shed TV, my name is Keith and today I'm going to be looking at 8mm film or more specifically I'm going to be looking at an 8mm film projector I was clicking through eBay the other day and uh, happened to find uh, this projector um, which had seemed to have very little interest in it um, I thought it was a fantastic looking thing and I thought I'd have a little um, bid on it and see how I got on um, I bid 30 quid, thinking that I had no chance of winning it and amazingly, I won it for £21. A large parcel has arrived today, uh, so I'm going to open it up and have a look at the projector. And here it is. Let's get a closer look at that. So what I've got here is a Nihilus projector uh, and it was made by an Italian company uh, by the name of Circe um, and I believe from what uh, uh, little research that I've done uh, that it was made around about 1957. Um, apparently uh, it's very similar to a Bell and Howell model of a similar period, um, although I don't know a great lot about projectors. In fact, I know just about nothing, so this is uh, all pretty new to me. What I do know about this projector is that it was advertised as working, um, although missing its mains lead. Now, I looked at the photograph on the eBay listing, which was rather like this, at this two-prong connector, um, and I was unable to identify it. Spoke to a friend of mine, a chap called Bob Burnell, and he suggested it might be um, a European type um, two pin connector, uh, which is similar to um, a British style shaver plug. So I've had um, a look on eBay and I managed to buy one or two different connectors, um, which I've got here. So uh, let's see if any of those will fit. This is what Bob recommended I buy. It's an extension lead for a um, uh, European type uh, round pin plug. Um, and looking at, it's quite difficult to do this one handed, looking at those two pins side by side, sorry, those two connectors side by side, it does look like it's very similar. Um, however, I'm not sure that this large end is going to fit in there. That would be a big fat no. I have some other connectors. This one claims to be a 5 amp uh, 2 pin connector, well it is, <laughs> it is a 5 amp 2 pin connector, um, I think I can see straight away that that's not going to go in there. Um, the pin spacing, um, I don't know if you can see that, looks to me like it's pretty close. The pins are larger in the connector. Um, I've got another one here which is uh, 10 amp, oh, that's definitely going to be too big, those pins are way bigger. Yeah, that's closer to fitting in the hole, but uh, that's never going to work because the the, um, the socket is far too big. Okay, this one, well, this claims to be 10 amp, but it's much smaller, it's got very large pins, that's never going to work. Oh, it does fit, oh, it does fit in there, but well, that's no use, is it? Okay, so I think we'll go back to the one that Bob suggested. I have had a slightly off the wall idea. This is the um, this is the small tamp connector that will actually fit in there, but with the uh, pins which are too large. Um, and this is the um, uh, this is the European thing that uh, Bob suggested. What I'm wondering is, although that is a sealed uh, moulding. If I can carefully cut that open, I wonder if I can transplant the uh, the internals from that um, from that into the case from this because they can come out uh, and perhaps cable and all uh, fit that together and maybe get something that'll mate. I'm going to try hacksawing along the moulding join and uh, see if that does the trick. And uh, in case you're wondering. In the background here, this isn't the kitchen, um, if my wife's watching, this is just a figment of your imagination. Oh, 
Here we go. Right then. There is, you see that? A pair of connectors. Let's go and see if they fit uh, over the prongs on the projector. That will be a resounding yes. Now theoretically I could put a 13 amp plug on the other end of this cable and, uh, and plug it in, um, but um, that would be really stupid and dangerous and um, the most likely scenario is that I'd forget that I'd done that and uh, while I was getting all excited about the projector, uh, put my hand across the live mutual there and uh, blow myself out the dining room window. So um, let's, um, let's try and find a safer way of doing this. These are the contacts from the 10 amp connector uh, that fits in the projector. Um, and they've got a screw terminal on the back. And this is the cable that we're looking at just now. Now these will actually fit inside here. Um, as you can see that cable is crimped onto um, this brass lug that fits the projector. So my thinking is that if I cut this off here and then feed this in from the front so that that brass section there can be tightened down onto that screw there. With a bit of luck, with this cable bared back, it'll also fit in that hole and I can tighten the screw down uh, and make contact. Um, so I think I've got nothing to lose. I'm going to give it a go. There's one made up. Uh, that seems to have worked very well. That's good and tight in there, it's not going anywhere. What I'll try and do is film making up the uh, live side of it. Uh, I'll try and do this as best I can. I'm not quite sure how well this is going to turn out. So first of all I need to trim that uh, live cable back to about there and I'll need to bear it uh, to about there. So with that cable bared back I'm twisting that nice and tightly. It's good. So the next thing that I'll do is to take the screw right out of the um, 10 amp connector Here's our insert. I'm going to cut it off just there. What I found with the other one was that I had to squeeze up the uh, this crimp section slightly to get it to go into the brass. So that's squeezed up there, and then hopefully that'll go um, into there. Okay, so I'm just going to pop that out again and put my live cable um, into that hole there. And then I'm going to put the insert, which I've just lost. Oh, there it is. I'm going to put the insert back in from the other side. Hopefully, I can press that home. This is quite difficult to do because I'm watching this through the camera screen. Um, and I'm just going to have to nip that up a little bit with the pliers like that and I can now um, replace the little brass screw and tighten that down there we go inside this connector um, it's labelled uh, neutral on that side, live on that side um, to be honest, that doesn't seem to make a great deal of sense to me because you can plug it together either way around. But I'll follow the labelling anyway um, and put the neutral back in this side. So that's just pop in there, like that, and then it's just a case of tightening down the cable grip um, nice and tightly. Yeah, that can't come out, so that can't pull um, pull any of that apart. Uh, the moment of truth now, uh, will the lid go on? Yes, it will. So there it is back together. Um, fortunately, the ends of those um, inserts from the other connector um, aren't protruding from the end, which I was slightly concerned about. It's obviously plenty of clearance. You can't get your finger in there. Not, not even a child could get its finger in there. Not that um, anyone's going to be touching this other than me. Um, so let's try and plug it into the projector.
Well, what about that? Good tight fit. That I would call a result. One final thing then was to cut off the um, shaver plug, European plug, whatever you want to call it, and replace it with a British 13 amp plug. Envy of the world, Bob says. Um, now because this cable's so thin, um, I've put a 3 amp fuse in there so that uh, in the event of a short circuit we don't get the cable catching fire. So that's all ready to go. Um, I've not plugged this in yet. I always like to do this, uh, well, <laughs> as live as it can be on a recording, but I've, I genuinely haven't plugged it in. Um, so let's give it a go. Here we go then. Well, it hasn't blown up. That's a good start. I don't know what these switches do. Let's try them. Well, that's underwhelming. I'm taking a top cover off to reveal a lamp, which appears to be intact. I've got power going, you probably can't see it's out of shot, going up the cable, but I can't pick up power anywhere on the projector. Even if I go right down in there to the terminals where the lamp connects, um, that's M. Oh, I presume that means motor. I wonder where the motor is. That's probably here, isn't it? What does that do? Don't know. ML. Motor and lamp? Yeah, still nothing. Hmm. Well, that's all a bit of a disappointment. Um, I'm going to have to investigate that further. But I'm out of time for today, it's time to go to work, so I think I'll close this video here. And uh, hopefully you'll join me again in the next part where I um, do a little bit more investigation into, um, into what might be wrong with this. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, um, please uh, give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, and I'd love to have any comments uh, from anybody on, uh, on, on any subject to do with uh, 8mm projection. Um, a subject about which I know so far very little. Cheers then. Bye.